Good morning. Today is the day we're gonna start fitting the diesel heater. So first we gotta check what we have to install. Because even though it's not super complicated, it's not easy. Of course, because it's on a boat and it's all different. First of all, we have to fit the diesel heater itself. It's not that big. It's actually smaller than I thought it would be. Yeah, it, it's the size I expected it to be. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a bit smaller. But it's not that heavy. That's uh, okay. So we have to fit a bunch of hoses to it. Like uh, the hot air exhaust for in the cabin. The super hot air exhaust from the actual burning of the diesel. The air intake and fuel line. Yes. And power. <laughs> so that's one. It comes with this mounting plate, but you can't really fit it to something else. So I think we already have a little bracket for it. Yep. So I'm gonna first try and see if I can make the bracket so we can fit this and then we can fit all the other stuff around it. Is my idea. Because we have to fit a bunch of other stuff. Like this. <laughs> this is the little control panel. On, off. On, off. Uh, Very easy. Hot, cold. We went for the simple one. There are more complicated uh, panels. But the problem with these things is you have to uh, connect it to the battery source itself. Uh, and not through a switch. Because the problem is if you accidentally turn this off when it's on. If you disconnect all power there's a chance you burn the unit because it has a, a cool down phase. It has to uh, cool down for a couple of minutes. It does this by itself if you just press this off button. But if I were to disconnect all the power, mm -hmm. then it might burn. So we don't want that. Nope. Empty. Empty. Then we have a big box of crap, basically. Yeah. The manual, which is useless because it's uh, translated from Chinese. <laughs> and it's also not the heater that we have. No, but it's, but uh, it's, it's, it's similar. It's pretty much oh. the same. It's very funny. A bunch of fittings and hose clamps and fuel filters and whatever. So we'll figure out what that is. Uh, two air ducts, yep. extendable. That is the cold air intake. A fuel, fuel. line. Yep. Some uh, ducting, but I don't know if we have to use this. Because we already have... Uh... Yeah, there's, there used to be a heater in this boat. Yeah. And uh, there's already some holes. So we're gonna, just gonna try and use those. Yeah. The air filter for the intake. The fuel pump and the wiring harness. Um, I'll probably have to extend it or do some <laughs> some work to it because it's meant for a van and not for a boat. And in a boat, the distances are weird. But I'm sure we can figure this out. It's not super complicated. This stuff, I don't think we're going to use it. Mm -mm. Maybe. Yeah, this is uh, the exhaust that usually comes with it. And then there are some parts you should never use on a boat. Yeah. It comes with these little silencers. And as you, yeah, you probably can't see it, but these are just spot welded in place. So gas can escape here. And there's this little hole here where normally condensation would leak out. Um, on a van, if you mount um, the exhaust underneath a van and it just blows out, it's not a problem. But in a boat, your exhaust will run through the boat. And because it's a diesel heater, you will have carbon monoxide. Well, <laughs> if there's one thing you don't want, it's carbon monoxide poisoning. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're not going to use that. But there are brackets in there. There are little brackets in there. Maybe, Maybe we're going to use the little brackets. I ordered a much longer exhaust. 
because yes. we have to go from there to yeah. the back of the boat. Yeah, 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 yeah. I ordered a uh, a specific exhaust for uh, on the uh, exterior, like a through hull, and it's double skinned. So where the actual exhaust uh, mounts to is not where the boat mounts to, if you can see it here. And that means there's uh, very little heat transfer between the exhaust and your fiberglass hull. So you won't melt your boat. Pretty good idea. You rather than me. No, these work. Mm -hmm. these work. And then, uh, what I also bought is two rolls of this stuff. And it's basically heat wrap. You see this on motorcycles where they put uh, stuff on their exhaust so you don't burn your leg. I ordered 30 meters of it so we can wrap a whole bunch of stuff with it uh, and hopefully uh, not burn anything uh, on the boat, stuff that gets hot and if it might accidentally touch something that you're not instantly uh, burning stuff or because we have jerry cans, we have wood, we have fiberglass, we have wetsuits, we have all sorts of stuff and uh, yeah it's just gonna have to live together a little bit so that's why we have this stuff we have a lot it comes with uh, metal zip ties mm. that don't melt mm -hmm. instead of plastic ones and last but not least is no it's not the last but oh we have a big fuel tank yes what's in there i see there's no fuel connection yet. Maybe we have to mount it ourselves. So that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> Let's see what's in. It's, ah. probably, uh, it's the fuel mounting. <laughs> yeah. The fuel hose. <laughs> it's 10 liter fuel tank. My idea is to put it uh, somewhere in the back. But maybe uh, we don't have enough space and then I will mount it underneath the engine cover and then we'll just have to uh, uh, remove the engine cover to refill the diesel heater. Which is fine because with 10 liters you should get about 100 hours of heat That's and lovely. we maybe put it 2 hours, 3 hours every evening so it, it wouldn't be a daily thing. So that we have to do. That's the cap. Back. I think that's about it. Here you got some. Uh, oh, yeah, some silicone heat, mat. Heat resistant silicone mat. Yeah, I got some silicone mat. Um, I think it's self adhesive, so. If I think the exhaust hose is running a little close to something, I can put some extra silicone there just to insulate it some more because, well, I just don't want to burn down the boat. <laughs> but we also want to do it uh, cheaply because, yes, there are much nicer exhausts specifically for boats with very nice heat insulation, but they cost more than the heater itself. Yep. And, and we don't have that, <laughs> all our money. Because you're not subscribing to our patreon that's why <laughs> <laughs> subscribe subscribe i'm kidding i'm kidding but uh Why is the coffee? yeah we do want to stay warm but we don't want to spend the thousands of no. euros uh, mm -hmm. because we'll be going to warmer places so it's not a year-round thing for us no it's going to be a very seasonal thing it doesn't even have to run during the day out here it's no, only just by night, night. Yeah. so for me going the super expensive route i don't think it's worth it Mm -mm. But this is for us a, a great solution to at least be out of the marinas and yes. uh, stay at anchor. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get started. <laughs>
Okay, so I've uh, fitted these little brackets. I just got them from the from the hardware store. They're really cheap, but mostly they're metal. <laughs> Uh, this is the most important part. Um, if you were to connect this directly to wood, you would smell a, a burning smell quite fast. <laughs> we know this because someone uh, we know has tried it, <laughs> and uh, it didn't it didn't go that well for him. So we have uh, metal brackets. Um, right now, if you lift it like this, it doesn't seem very sturdy. But of course, it's the other way around, and it will lean on this plate. And I just tested it, and I didn't even tighten these bolts yet and it felt very secure so uh, what we're gonna do now is take this bracket off and then uh, mount it below so we can mount this one easily and then we're gonna go on to the next step okay so Kim is now in the bowels of the boat which is getting tighter and tighter and tighter because we're fitting more and more stuff uh, I can't fit like this so <laughs> Yeah, luckily Kim is uh, quite small. Uh, she's marking the holes. We already um, determined the place for the ducting, for the hot air that goes into the cabin. And Kim is now marking some holes where we can mount the bracket. And then we can take the heater off and it's a lot easier to, uh, uh, to fit the bracket without the heater on it. Should I? Because it's, yeah, it's so it. heavy. Yeah, at some point. Oh. Yeah, 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 I got it. And so uh, on your left hand, that's the new duct, and it goes underneath the battery. And then we're gonna go inside. Don't mind the mess. And it comes out here, and it will go to that little grid over there. This one over here, and that will give us hot air in the cabin. Oh, let me turn off the radio. Um, so what we have to do now is mount the bracket, um, connect the ducting, and then we can move on to the uh, fuel system and the exhaust. And then the power. And then we're done. Easy! Don't you dare! It's gonna explode on us, man. Oh. You're doing a great job. So, we have removed the heater from the bracket. And now Kim is mounting the bracket without the weight of the heater on. It's a lot easier. Let me see. There's a bit of fiberglass. Bada bing, bada boom. You're good at screwing. <laughs> so Kim is now mounting the heater to the bracket. So that's a big step. I think uh, one more nut to go after this. And then the heater is mounted to the boat and then the hot air ducting has been ran so then we only have exhaust and fuel left and power and uh, power <laughs> you need two washers those are for you and a nut a nut from a nut yep hmm. a nutty nut Bada bang, bada boom! Awesome. Alright, so our next job 
is prepping the fuel tank and the fuel tank does not come with a fuel pickup. It is a, a separate part and yeah, I'm gonna have to get it in there somehow. Um, first I'm gonna have to drill an uh, eight millimeter hole for this, for this little part. And then that part needs to sit basically like this <laughs> in the fuel tank. So we need to get it through this pipe down here in there somehow. I think I have a trick, but I don't know if it's gonna work. But first I'm gonna drill a hole in it and then uh, we'll see if we can make it work. It's an eight millimeter hole. I have my eight millimeter drill bit and now I need my Makita. Uh, Kim, where is the Makita? So, I am going to drill a hole in a fuel tank, which is a first for me. Right about there seems about good. Boom. No debris left. Well, some. Whatever. Now the challenge is to get that little fuel pickup thing in that tiny hole. But of course, you cannot reach it. So. I'm gonna do so I'm gonna insert this wire and I'm gonna try to get it up here <laughs> which is a lot Why easier it up so almost I think I can grab okay now we have a line Hmm? No. And now I'm gonna see if this wire is small enough. It's not. But I can strip it. Strip? Strip, strip, strip. So we have the little thing, I stripped the wire, but there's also a little o-ring here. So I'm going to put some, uh, some uh, engine oil on it, just to make it seal a little bit better. Put it gently on your finger. There we go. Alright. Okay, so I have the fuel pickup connected to the wire. And now I'm carefully gonna put it into the tank. That's annoying. Ah. 
and now it's in. <laughs> First try. First tree. Yep. Now all we have to do is mount the thing. And then we are done. Well, let's see if this uh, starts leaking or not. I think it won't. It looks actually pretty well sealed. Maybe you want to do a double check. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Well done, baby. Oh, here's the lens. Yeah, good. Sorted. I was going through that in my mind for a couple days. How was I going to do it? But the trick is, use a bit of wire. <laughs> good, 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 good. Alright, we are going to call it a day. Because, as you can see, the, <laughs> the sky is turning very grey. Sunlight is fading and the other jobs we have to do now is uh, install the exhaust run the power lines and do the fuel um, and I don't see us doing any of those jobs in an hour and it doesn't make sense to do that in the dark so we're gonna carry on tomorrow um, I'm really happy with the progress we made today so I think tomorrow or the day after tomorrow we should be done if we don't run into any weird stuff and then we have to see if we can get it running <laughs> see if we have any fault codes or uh, stuff like this but uh, I watched a lot of YouTube videos on this and I read a lot about it so I think I think we're gonna manage what we're gonna see tomorrow what kind of issues we're gonna run in at that point <laughs> there's always one but we'll be fine mm -hmm.